Southern Cross. Somewhere in the South Atlantic, somewhere in the majestic waters which separate the continents of Africa and South America, a German submarine keeps a secret rendezvous. With supplies exhausted after weeks of preying on Allied shipping, the U-boat makes contact with a supply submarine, a milk cow, from which it will take on fuel, food, ammunition. Fattened and refreshed, fighting submarines range farther, strike oftener, hit harder without having to return to base. The South Atlantic is now a battleground. successful. 
Single-handed, she hunts down and murders 50,000 tons of precious Allied shipping. As long as the Grafsch Bay is on the loose, no freighter within her enormous cruising range is safe. Let any merchant ship run afoul of her, and that ship is doomed. Warning to stop is flashed to the helpless freighter. To avoid antagonizing neutrals early in the war, the German Navy holds fire until the crew is transferred from the ship marked for destruction. of the Grafsch Bay overshadows the entire South Atlantic. But the hunter is being hunted. British cruisers, Exeter, Ajax, Achilles, after incessant search, bring the pocket battleship to bay. the Grafsch Bay, but they do not sink her. Crippled and far from base, the German runs for cover. In the port of Montevideo, in neutral Uruguay, the battered Grafsch Bay finds fleeting refuge. But two weeks are needed for repairs, and the international laws of neutrality rule she can remain a mere 72 hours. Night and day, the British cruisers patrol outside the harbor to prevent the Grafsch Bay's escape. Ashore, the Uruguayan government imposes the strict neutrality rules on the German crew and rejects the desperate pleas of their captain to extend the time limit. The Grafsch Bay is trapped. She cannot remain, cannot escape. On Sunday, December 17, 1939, the end comes. The Queen of the German Navy blows herself up. The Graf Spee commits suicide. Axis warships are not alone in menacing the free world below the Tropic of Cancer. German interests, with their own newspapers and business organizations, ally themselves with the fatherland. The totalitarian trappings of German fascism are openly worshipped on South American soil. Fascism even threatens the Caribbean. At the island of Martinique, important units of the French fleet lie anchored after France surrenders to Germany. The United States must prevent the ruling Vichy sympathizers on the island from transferring these ships to the Germans. The United States Navy exerts pressure to thwart such a move, keeps the warships neutralized. 
strategically located islands like Trinidad, crucial to the defense of the Panama Canal and the Atlantic coast, become ramparts which the Navy uses to keep the war from the shores of the Americas. Trinidad's naval operating base begins functioning in August 1941. When the United States enters the war, Trinidad is a keystone in the southern convoy system and anti-submarine warfare. Under Rear Admiral Hoover, commander of the Caribbean Sea Frontier, the Navy relentlessly polices southern waters. another kind of killer loose beneath the Southern Cross. It is not the U-boat, not a warship, but a German raider disguised as a merchantman, stalking her prey by stealth and fraud. Her victims think her an innocent freighter, but this is the Atlantis, a ravager that hits suddenly from ambush, showing her true colors only when ready to kill. assassin of the sea, killer in Mufti. Already she has slaughtered 20 ships, but she prowls for more. A fat prize, this one. A Greek merchant ship. Her crew is brought aboard the raider and the boarding party is ordered to loot her provisions and cargo before sending her to the bottom. The lawlessness to be staged on her deck stems from the days of skull and crossbones. The days of piracy on the high seas. First the raider will exact her tribute, then she will destroy. Do not robe the South Atlantic unchallenged. His Majesty's cruiser, Devonshire, 
sweeps far and wide to flush them out of these remote, vital waters, which feed the world's major ocean arteries. observation plane comes the report of an unidentified ship in the area, and the Devonshire changes course and speed to investigate. Is it friend or is it foe? The Devonshire must make sure before opening fire. The unknown ship maneuvers suspiciously, and the cruiser is alerted for action. Suspicion grows into certainty, as a check of intelligence reports indicates the ship may be the German raider known as number 16. Secret recognition signals from the Devonshire bring only evasive response from the mystery ship. No doubt remains. This is no friend, no innocent freighter. This is the raider Atlantis. cannot stay to rescue survivors. For wherever a German raider is, there also are German submarines. Hoping for combat, but too late to catch the wary Devonshire, the U-boat finds herself faced with a mission far different rescue at sea. For surviving crewmen of the Atlantis and the captured allied seamen from her victims, the providential appearance of the submarine means sudden salvation. Submarine heads toward a rendezvous with the supply ship, which will take the survivors ashore. Halfway between Africa and South America, midway in the South Atlantic, Ascension Island, a barren slab of volcanic rock transformed by a freak of war into a militant sentiment. American engineers transform this isolated English possession into a hornet's nest for the enemy, a haven for friends. airfield, short-range American planes pause and refuel on their flights to Africa. And from Ascension, patrol planes wing out in both directions, where the bulge of Africa and the bulge of Brazil squeeze the ocean together into the South Atlantic Narrows. Here the hunt for U-boats is pursued in a monotonous, unrelenting manner. Here more submarines are destroyed than in any other comparable stretch of ocean.
Brazil, there is a saying. They who say Brasileiro, God is a Brazilian, because he has favored the land so lavishly. In August of 1942, Brazil joins the Allies in fighting the aggression that imperils the two Americas alike. The navies of Brazil and the United States have long worked together. Under the overall direction of Vice Admiral Jonas Ingram, commander of the United States Fourth Fleet, the resources, bases, manpower and the training of the two great republics are pooled into one single, splendid cooperative effort. German tanks convoyed safely through the narrows, turned the tide of battle at El Alamein. Victory at sea in the South Atlantic means victory across the sea in North Africa. like Natal, Cape San Roque, Recife, Fortaleza, Belém, bases on the bulge of Brazil, the Navy sends up its aircraft to scan the aquamarine waters of the southern hemisphere. The blimps are the first of their kind to cross the equator. They're steady, patient patrols, add another dimension to convoy protection. steps are taken to shoe the wheels that one day will roll across Italy and France and into Germany. North America is the arsenal of democracy, but South America pours out her wealth to keep the arsenal stocked. Refusing to pay one cent for tribute, but willing to spend millions for defense, the American republics have swept from the ocean highways of the South Atlantic their common foe. Spread wide across the sea, guarded by the might of nations which can fight side by side because they have learned to live side by side, the ships stream toward their goal. Allied victory. 